neglecting the garden lately. So the Jamaican callaloo here, had I cut it back, it would have already um, sprouted up some more leaves. But small thing, we will harvest some of this here now. And you know, you trim it back. And then where you trim it back, it will grow and continue growing and continue bearing for you. Nice and fresh straight out of the garden. So now what we need to do, and I'm really impressed on you, is to wash this really well. And while you're washing it, you're gonna take the leaves, so the stem is here. You're gonna pick those leaves off like so. And then I'll show you how to trim it down further, but the whole idea here now, and, and the stems, we'll be using some of the stems as well, to so save the stems as well, but you want to pick all the leaves off as I just did there. Anything with any sort of blemish and stuff like that, like this, this here really doesn't count, but if it was black and tarnished then and all that stuff like that, you would just rip that off into the rubbish. But again, you really want to wash this really well. And remember to get on the front side and the back side of the leaf, the back side <laughs> of the leaves when you're doing so. If you wanted to fill the sink with water and and rinse it in there, you can certainly do that. The only thing is, I would just say is, because sometimes there's sand in here, the very bottom of the sink will collect a, quite a bit of sand, so be mindful of that. So as I wash it, I'm just gonna put it on the side there and continue. One thing I forgot to mention is the, the sort of top part with the stem, I, I kept some of the stem, like you will see, like with this one, it's a tender stem, so I kept that. Now the more tough stems like this, like this one here, what I like doing is you grab a knife and you will sort of peel and pull back on it like so. I'm just gonna take the water off there. You don't need to be wasting water, but you would pinch a piece and then you would pull down and the sort of exterior will be, uh, I'm just gonna cut that and show you again. You pull back and that's going to allow us to cook it really really tender and in a quick time as well I'm just going to cut that sort of node out pull back like so yeah with the same stem what i like doing is cutting down the center like so splitting it into two and i'm going to hit them a chop there put them together and about half of a centimeter thick and I'll just put it in a separate bowl and I'll explain to you all why later on so we've got that there I'm gonna give it another rinse uh, with cool water now with the leaves we will just stack them up like so get a nice big pile of it stack them up and when you see the sort of that same thing we ripped off the stems you can always pull that back as well like on here that will make it a bit tough and a bit chewy so what I like doing is getting a nice pile of that together and we've you've seen me do this before and basically all you want to do is give that a chop about Just about half a centimeter or so. Just gonna line that up, push that over. And as you start working down to where the more leafy parts are, you will give it a roll nice and tight just to make it a little bit safer and easier. Like notice I have it like a cigar almost. And you need a nice sharp knife. And this is pretty much how you would prep it. Notice how nice and thin. If you want it thicker, or I mean um, a thicker sort of cut, you can do that as well too. It's totally up to you. After all, it's your, it's your kitchen, it's your rules, man. Chris is just here to guide you, yeah? It will take a few minutes, but we got those nice shreds here of that Jamaican kalalu or chorai bhaji. And it may look like quite a bit, but all of that will wilt down in the pot. So we've got the more thicker stems there. And you'll see in between here the little stems from the actual leaves. So that's all prepped and ready. I've got my pot there on a medium flame. And I'm going to go in with a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. 
If you wanted to use coconut oil, you can certainly use coconut oil. Or if all you have is vegetable oil, corn oil, canola oil, yo, rock what you got, Uncle Chris not hating. Now something you didn't see me do, and that is prepare salted pigtails. Yes, yeah, salted pigtails. And I'm trying to keep this recipe as true as I can to the way my mom would make it from time to time. Um, when she didn't have salted pigtail or salted beef, we would also use salted cod, you know, salt fish. And what I'm trying to do here is sort of render out some of the fat from the prepared salted pigtail to flavor the dish. Now, when I say prepare, and if you want me to do a video showing you how to prepare it, hit me a comment down below. But basically all you would do, you would get the salted pigtail. It would be in lengths of maybe about uh, six to eight inches or something. You would boil, bring it, uh, put it in a deep pot with water, bring it up to a boil, allow it to boil. And I allow this to cook, boil for about one hour. Two reasons. One, to make it nice and tender. And two, to remove most of the salt. It can be very salty. And you can see that fat already rendering down there. Once you've done that, drain it, rinse it, and then cut it up into small pieces. Now, if you're at the butcher and you want to get them to cut it for you first, you can certainly do that. It's just, in my case, the but when it's tender, it's easier to cut. I'm just gonna give that two minutes. Please be mindful, as that happens in the pot there, that fat renders out. It may also want to splat or splat it on you, so be mindful of that. I'm going to add half of a large onion and five cloves of garlic to the pot now. Give that another mixing mix like so. And that garlic and onion, you know, and you know, just about every dish I share with you all, it's about building flavor. So it's all that building block there. So at the end, we have a solid foundation when we eat this dish when it comes to flavor. I'm going to hit it with some fresh ground black pepper. And remember the stems, the more thicker stems that we had earlier, that's what I'm going to add it to the pot as well. And the reason why I like adding it now is because that is a bit more tough. It will be, uh, it will take a bit longer to cook. Ooh, one of them just went flying out of the pot there. Ah, uh, boy, they want to escape. <laughs> I'm just going to give that another minute or so. I'm going to turn my heat down to low. Because I really don't want to burn anything, especially that garlic that's adding all that flavor in there. That one more little stir. I'm telling you, the kitchen is smelling wonderful at this point. And then it's time to start adding all of the prepared greenery to the pot. Yes, it will cook down, it will wilt down. What I'm going to do is kind of press it down a little bit. And you will notice one thing about the recipe here, I will not add any salt until near the end. And the reason being the remaining salt in that salted pigtail may be enough to season this properly. But what I was going to say is I'm going to add a lid on there to give this some more heat so it will wilt down and I'll continue adding more and then we'll start stirring. It's all in the pot now. So all I'm doing is giving it a little shaky shake and trying to move it and flip the bottom up. Like so, now ladies and gentlemen, I am using salted pigtail in there. If that's not your thing, you don't have to, as I said before, as I mentioned before, you can use salted cod. You can go without any of that stuff there. It's just, you'll have to put salt later on. Coconut milk. If you wanted to use smoked turkey in there, you can do that. Totally up to you, ham hocks, all that kind of stuff like that. We're gonna turn the heat up to medium high now, bring that up to a boil, and that coconut milk is gonna bring that sweetness and that true Caribbean vibe to things. It's gonna give that another little shaky shake there. I want some heat, so I got two peppers from the garden. Just gonna crack them open, like so. If you wanted to use scotch bonnet pepper, if you wanted to use habanero, if you want to leave that pepper out altogether, you can certainly do that as well. The fragrance from that pepper though, man, when you grow your own stuff in the garden, I'm telling you boy, lid back on, and we're going to sort of bring that up to a boil, it's going to spring up its own juices, plus that coconut milk needs to pull everything together. It's been about 10 minutes, and um, 
it came up to that sort of strong bubble, I reduced the heat down. And if you notice, when I had the lid on, I had it slightly ajar, maybe about a centimeter or so. Give that another mix. And here's where you're gonna start personalizing things now. This is cooked maybe 90% of the way I like it. Some people like it a lot more cooked, but I might like it the way it is there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn up my heat and burn off all that liquid there. And in the process, intensify the overall flavor of things. Um, taste it for salt, adjust that salt. And I have one more thing I want to add, well, two things I want to add near the end. And I'll show you that shortly. It did take another 10 minutes or so with the lid off. I cranked up the heat there. I notice all that liquid is gone. The residual heat is gonna burn off anything that's still there. And how I like finishing this off is with some tomato. And that's just a tomato I diced up. I removed the seeds and I diced up. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, Take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. And that tomato, it's all about balance, right? And every time I cook and I share a recipe with you guys, we talk about building flavors, we also talk about balance. The acidity in that tomato will help to sort of balance off the fat from the coconut milk and the salted pigtail that we have in there. And the final thing, sometimes you may get an itch in the back of your, your tongue, the back of your throat there, when you eat um, fresh leafy greens, you know, anything spinach related. So I like to go in with a tiny bit, and I'm just trying to catch any seeds of lemon juice in there. Give that another quick stir, turn off the stove, Put the lid on and let the residual heat soften up that tomato and release that acidity and pull everything together. Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com. We did, well, what I know as Chori Baji. Some of you may know it internationally, especially my Jamaican brothers and sisters as Jamaican Kalaloo. This is not Kalaloo in the Southern Caribbean. This is what we call Baji or spinach. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. I'm going to talk in here, but look at that. Mm.